The joy of Christ be with you. Nothing like a college campus in the fall. A college campus is one of the last best places, one of the last best places for us to ask those questions that endure through generations. I particularly love this kind of college where our mission allows this symbiotic relationship between the classroom and the chapel, the classroom, this place that you're permitted and encouraged to ask the hard questions, to discover, to research, all of that throwing you back to the chapel where you have the doxology of praise to sing how great thou art. And that doxology drives you back to the classroom to ask more probing and honest questions. Back and forth we go. And all of it ignites a sense of wonder. What I love about a college campus is that this is a place where we are encouraged to be intoxicated with wonder. And how we get intoxicated is one of the greatest resources we have, which is our faculty. People who take their discipline with such seriousness and care and love to help us see God in new ways. This morning, it's my great privilege to invite our own beloved Dr. Beth Anderson, who's the Associate Professor of Chemistry, as well as a Towsley Research Fellow. Would you please welcome Dr. Anderson? Thank you. I'm going to start today with a quote that some of you have seen before. I start off in the fall all of my general chemistry lecture classes with this quote. It's by a theologian as he discusses science. Trying to pierce the mystery with our categories is like trying to bite a wall. Science extends rather than limits the scope of the ineffable. And our radical amazement is enhanced rather than reduced by the advancement of knowledge. Scientific research is an entry into the endless. It's not a blind alley. Solving one problem, a greater one enters our sight, and one answer breeds a multitude of new questions. Explanations are merely indications of a greater puzzle. Everything hints at something that transcends it. The detail indicates the whole, the whole its idea, the idea its mysterious root. And what appears to be a center is but a point on the periphery of another center. There are a lot of things that I like about this quote, but today I want to focus on the idea of wonder that I see here. The idea of wonder as both a noun and a verb, radical amazement, that emotion, that feeling of awe, that feeling of wonder, wonder is a noun. Science does not explain away the marvelous thing that we gaze upon. It only makes it more marvelous. Wonder as a verb, to ask questions, to think, to speculate curiously. Wonder as a verb. Wonder is integral part of my scientific endeavors as well as my spiritual journey. And I believe that God intends for this wonder to lead me to worship him more fully. In our time together today, I want to connect this concept of wonder to the passage found in Matthew 6, verses 26 through 30. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spend. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. We all know this passage is associated with worry, right? Not wonder. 
But, but I think that Jesus is pointing us in our worry to look at the world around us, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. He is pushing us to look beyond ourselves at the common things along our paths and to see them more fully, to be in amazement, to wonder at their beauty. And then Jesus guides us from there to ask questions. He asks a lot of questions in this passage. Questions about the thing we're gazing upon, as well as questions about our own lives. We observe that the birds do not store away, and the lilies of the field, they do not labor, and yet they are beautiful and they are cared for by this creator, God. If God cares for them in this way, we can be encouraged that he too will care for us. The passage says in verse 30, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? And in that question, where perhaps we see that our faith is small, is Jesus not pointing us to see and remember how great God's faithfulness is to us? I think that Jesus often, in his teachings and in his parables, he pointed us to the world around us and pointed us to wonder. In our time together, I want to focus on what I call the spiritual practice of considering the lilies and how that leads us to wonder and to worship. A few years ago, I was listening to a lecture by an artist, and that artist was saying that he thought that artists as a group were the last people to take seriously Jesus' charge to consider the lilies of the field. And when he said that, I sat up really straight, and I said to myself, wait a second, that's what I do. I consider, not the lilies, I'm not a botanist, but I consider these atoms and these ions and these molecules that come together to become nanomaterials, and I consider them very, very carefully. I think that as scientists, we are actually uniquely trained to consider the lilies. Most of us are people who are caught up in wonder or we're deeply fascinated by some aspect of creation, from quantum theory to the Krebs cycle. Scientists, we're a curious bunch. If you've ever hung out with a three or four-year-old, you know they ask a lot of questions, right? Why? Well, how? Well, how come? Well, why is that? They're constantly asking those questions. I don't think scientists ever advance beyond that stage. We ask a lot of questions. This training in wonder, to be observant and to ask questions, may lead some scientists only to a deeper appreciation and respect for the world around them without an acknowledgement of the Creator. But for those of us in Christ, this wonder can propel us to worship. I'm going to briefly introduce you to three people who have informed my thoughts regarding this spiritual practice of considering the lilies of the field. I didn't grow up believing that faith and science were separate. I actually have a distinct memory in late elementary school that directly contradicted this. This is from a public school textbook. I remember learning about Gregor Mendel. He's the father of genetics. And this right here is the actual picture that appeared in my textbook. If you notice his garb, you'll notice that Mendel, he was an Austrian scientist and an Augustinian friar. He considered not the lilies, but the pea plant. And within a six-year time period, he considered over 29,000 of them. I would hypothesize that God used those pea plants to teach Mendel a thing or two beyond just how recessive and dominant genes are inherited. While that's important, I'm guessing that God taught him a few other things along the way. Around about that same age, I also remember learning about how the cell was first seen through a microscope. I'm a microscopist. I'm kind of obsessed with images from microscopes. The scientist Hook, he looked through his microscope at a thinly sliced piece of tree bark. He considered what he saw very, very carefully. And he drew this picture that you see in the upper left-hand corner. He stated that the round, open holes reminded him of the cells where the monks resided. That's how the term cell was coined. 
I remember as a youngster finding delight in the fact that the basic building block of life was named after the place in which these religious folks lived. And lastly, I want to introduce to you Brother Lawrence. He's best known for a small book of letters that he wrote entitled Practicing the Presence of God. This helped me to see how this scientific training in wonder, to be observant like Hook and like Mendel, and to ask questions, how those things could be connected to my faith life. In his book, he states, I just make it my business to persevere in his holy presence. My soul has a habitual, silent, secret conversation with God. So in all the things I do, as I consider the lilies along my path, whether they are the changing colors of the leaves outside the science center or the thin film formation of the metal organic frameworks that we're studying in my lab, whether it be either of those, if I'm listening in conversation to hear what God wants to teach me, as I wonder about issues, both scientific and personal, that I can be led to a place of worship, to a place of reverence, to a place of revelation. The poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning says, earth is crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round it and pluck blackberries. To consider the lilies is to see and to take off your shoes. It is to allow your wonder, both your amazement and your questions, to propel you to worship. Because everything hints at something that transcends it. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for this creation and how you use it to draw us to yourself. May we go forth with eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us today. We give thanks in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Thanks. Amen.